In this presentation, we will continue on with our example problem for a not-for-profit organization, this time putting together a statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows will be put together from our trial balance, the trial balance on the left, statement of cash flows on the right. The trial balance will be in order cash up top in green, then the orange are the liabilities, the light blue is the equity section, or in this case, the, the net assets would be equity in a for-profit organization. Here, we're talking net assets. Then down below, we have what would be the income statement type of accounts in a for-profit type of organization. Those temporary accounts, those with, that would close out to the equity in a for-profit organization. Here, closing out to the net assets. We're going to be creating the statement of cash flows on the right. As we create the statement of cash flows, we're going to be going with the method of the direct method. And then we'll have the adjustments to reconcile changes in net assets to net cash provided by operating activities for the reconciling item, which is in essence the indirect method. Now recall, when we do the statement of activities, we generally have the option of using the indirect method. We could use the indirect method and then not the direct method for the operating activities, or we can choose to do the direct method. Now, if we choose to do the direct method, we may not be required to then do the indirect method or the adjustments to reconcile changes in net assets to net cash provided by operating activities. However, it's nice to do so because a lot of times the indirect method, the reason sometimes it's more preferable or in some cases required in for-profit type of organization, even if we do the direct method, sometimes the indirect method is desirable or in some cases required in a for-profit organization is that it will reconcile what would be the changes in the temporary accounts, what would be net income in a for-profit type of organization to basically a cash method to in essence the first component of the statement of activities the cash flows from operating activities so although the direct method actually makes more sense to many people if you were to explain it because it would basically be taking the income statement and changing each line item to a cash basis so instead of having basically the revenue on a, a rev on an accrual basis you would just simply convert it to a cash basis and then add up the cash flows revenues minus expenses in a similar type of fashion based on a cash basis and get to your bottom line number that makes sense easy it's direct however you don't get that reconciling process that you would have if you start from the ending number the change the basically kind of net income type of number which in our case is going to be the changes in net assets if you start at that number and then back into the basically cash flow net in income type of number, the cash flows from operating activities, then you get a nice reconciliation between the accrual basis and the cash basis. So we'll do the kind of the best of both worlds here. However, note, we're not going to be doing a lot of depth on the best way to construct the statement of cash flows. We've got a whole course on that. It's the most complicated financial statement of the ones that are common uh, to actually construct really helps to understand the accrual principle better. So if you want to take a look at that, go into that for more detail on just constructing a statement of cash flows, same kind of concept ideas for a nonprofit and a profit organization. Our first item is going to be cash received from customers. When we think about the cash received from customers, that's similar to on an income statement, the first line item, which is kind of like the revenue line item. Cash received from com customers would be similar to revenue, but on a cash basis if we were to think about the transactions that are making up the contributions without donor restrictions going to the gl consider those transactions we would see part of that being this transaction the transaction uh credit debiting cash this cash received the 348.7 is going to be the cash that's going to be received from customers in this particular problem note that the other side of the cash received from customers often has to do with the accounts receivable which is an accrual account so when we think about the accounts receivable, we have to basically, in essence, reverse out the accounts receivable in order to get the account, the cash received from customers. The next line item we're going to have is the cash paid to employees. The cash paid to employees is going to be including the salaries expense down below, as well as the accrual item, which is going to be the salaries payable up top. Note that this 16800 is the change as well because there was this the first uh, period of operations. Therefore, there was no beginning balance. So, so this is the change. The ending balance is the change given the fact that it is the first uh, month of operations. If we were to subtract those out, the 16800 uh, minus the 226260, 
that's going to give us the 209 460. Next, we're going to have the cash paid to suppliers. The cash paid to suppliers is going to include the telephone expense will be included in here. We're going to have the uh, printing and postage expense, the utilities, the supplies expense will be included as well. The other side of this will be the accounts payable. So the accounts payable is going to be the accrual account related to it. Once again, note that that is the change. That 4500 is the change first month, first period of operation. So if we pull the trusty calculator out and do some math here. We're going to say that 6200 plus the 12900 plus the 91900 plus the 5000 minus the 4500. And that's going to give us the 287. So there is our 287. Next, we are going to be adding these up. So we're going to add these up. And that's going to be the, let's do it just for the fun of it, the 3487 minus the 209.460 minus the 28700 that's going to give us the 110.540 that will be the net cash provided by operating activities net cash provided by operating activities then we got the cash flows from investing activities so you'll recall we've got the operating activities similar to basically the income statement on a cash basis the cash flows from investing activities and then we have the cash flows from financing activities the only investing activities we are including here or that we have was the purchase of equipment. We purchased equipment for 13000 If we were to drill down on the equipment account at the $24,500, we'll, we'll typically won't see a whole lot of transactions in the GL related to equipment because there's not going to be a ton of transactions for the purchase and sale of equipment. We'll see the transaction in this particular problem being this equipment purchase for the, we have the $24,500 in increase in equipment but only 13,000 of it was for cash. So the cash purchase of equipment will be that 13,000. You might also be asking, well, why, why is that an investment? You might be thinking of investments as basically stocks and bonds. What is equipment doing in there? Notice investments, one of those terms you gotta basically be careful with, with where we use it. Because here we're considering the investing activities, the long-term assets, in other words, and investing activity, the depreciable assets as an investment. We only are purchasing the depreciable assets, the equipment, the building, things like that, because we were using them to, in a for-profit organization, the idea being to generate revenue in the future. Here, we're, we're going to be using them to uh, fulfill our work purpose uh, in the future. Therefore, it's an investment to that end. Now, we don't have any financing activities, so we don't have a financing activities line item. So we could just go ahead and take these outer column numbers, the 110540 minus the 13,000. That's going to give us the 97,540, the 97,540 being the net increase in cash. That's going to be the net increase in cash. We're going to add the beginning cash to it, which in our case is zero because this is going to be the first month of operations in order to get to the ending cash, which will be that 97. 540 that's going to be the amount that's going to be within cash here within cash on the balance sheet so now we're going to take this statement of cash flows that is getting the first component of it the net cash provided by operating activities and take a look at it with regards to what would be similar to the in to the indirect method taking that indirect method now using the indirect method which will be reconciling the what would be the net income type of number or in our case, the increase in net assets that we're going to find on the statement of activities, the statement similar to the income statement where we have the increase in net assets. Here's the increase in net assets. That's the bottom line. We can also see it down here on the balance sheet. We're basically going to do the indirect method now, getting back to this same number in the net cash provided by operating activities. So we're going to call this the reconciliation of changes in net assets to net cash provided by operating activities. Okay, so we're going to start with the change in net assets. That's going to be the 278.9. Now, the reconciliation process, we're typically looking at the changes, the changes that are going to be in the balance sheet account to kind of reverse the accrual type of activity that's happening to get to the, to the cash, uh, cash related activities. So what we're going to do is take the changes. We're first going to start with depreciation. We do see depreciation down here and we're going to say, well, that's going to be the 4,400. And you can pick that up but note that I would also think of it as the change in the balance sheet account related to allowance uh, for depreciation, which is that 4,500. 
because you really want to get into the habit of considering what the change is going to really help you to think through the whole uh, activities here now you might be saying well what if those two aren't the same well then if you take this change and mark it off as saying hey that doesn't equal the change up here doesn't equal the depreciation down here something else must have happened and you're going to have to go back and dig into that into that uh, item I, anyways that's going to be a sale of depreciation or something like that and you'll have to dig into that information so what i would recommend doing is using the number up here marking it off and then going back to it and fixing it once you find that change in that way you could be in balance first and then go back and alter it for any kind of changes that need to be happening these are the some of the type of topics we talk about in the statement of cash flows uh, course where we'll talk more much more in depth about that so i do recommend looking into that because it can be a useful statement to learn here also note that this 4400 is the change because this is the first year of operations so we don't have to worry about subtracting the two out for the beginning and ending year because this is the change first year of operations so then we have an increase in the contributions receivable increase in the contributions receivable being the 182 560 taking these three numbers up top so if we take these three numbers the 217100 minus the 21600 minus the 12940 that's going to give us the 182 560 so there's the 182 560 to the increase in net contributions receivable then we have the increase in accounts payable the increase in accounts payable being of course the 4500 and note again there's no beginning balance so this is the change this is the increase it is also increasing in the credit direction because it's a credit balance account then we have increase in salaries payable increase in the salaries payable is going to be the 16,800 so once again that's the change because this is the first month of operation increase in salaries payable increasing by the 16,800 then we have the gift of the furniture the gift of the furniture the 11,500 that's going to give us the cash provided by operating activities also note that this gift of furniture is something that we had to basically take out so we're decreasing that from the change in net assets so we had this furniture that was gifted that was included in the change in net assets we're now removing it from the change in net assets then we've got the cash provided by operating activities if we were to add these up and remember you're adding the whole thing up here so we want to make sure that that we get all the way jump all the way up to this number the 278900 plus the 4400 minus the 182560 plus the 4500 plus the 16800 minus 115 that gives us the 110540 that 110540 down below matching the 110540 up above so this is going to be our financial statements thus far or these are our financial statements if you want to check the numbers then of course the first thing to consider usually would be hey do total assets equal the total liabilities and equity they should if they do then the balance sheet is in balance that's a good start then we want to check that the that the basically the uh, net assets section let's take the net assets as a whole the 278 900 does the 278 900 match up to the statement of activities it should so we have so we have that breaking out here and here because it's the first a month of operation therefore the increase in net assets the change is also the ending balance given there's no beginning balance and then we see that they have the uh, 172 for the without restrictions without restrictions with restrictions with restrictions over here considering the statement of cash flow of course the ending cash uh, that we have should be tying out note we just made a minor correction here with the beginning balance being zero the ending balance being uh, ending cash that ending cash then of course should be tying out to the uh, cash flow or the cash up top in the statement of financial position of course the reconciling item for cash the adjustments to reconcile change in net assets to net cash provided by operating activities the 110 540 should also tie out to the cash flows from operating activity in the direct method if we choose to use the direct method and then have the adjustments uh, the adjustment to reconcile change in net assets to net cash provided by operating activities included